Hi, this is Todd Geis from Geis Interactive and welcome to another little quick hit video. Um, today's subject is uh, related to Modular FileMaker, which is a, a website that I founded last year focused on creating loosely coupled chunks of FileMaker code that you can assemble into, into a larger application. Um, and we're, we're going to look at a couple modules, but only in passing. What I want to talk about today is something that probably actually won't ever make it into the specification because it's, it's, it's not really, a, um, it doesn't really fit. Uh, modular FileMaker modules are intended to be very loosely coupled. They're not intended to be at the framework level. They're not intended to tell you how to organize your application or how to design um, your file structure, any of those things. Naming conventions, none of that stuff is part of modular FileMaker. But um, I found myself developing uh, my applications recently. They've all sort of fallen into the same pattern. And it's heavily influenced by modularfilemaker.org. And uh, I think it's useful, and so I wanted to share it. So um, that's the website there. If you haven't seen it, you check it out. Um, lots of good stuff there. We have uh, dozens of modules now. It's, it's really great. Um, so definitely worth checking out. All right, let's get into the uh, topic here. Um, this is an application called Fields Inc., which we're going to be shipping at some point early next year. And I've developed this. Uh, this was developed entirely after modularfilemaker.org started, so it was heavily influenced by that. And um, this is where the pattern has most clearly expressed itself so far. Uh, so our modules are described in scripts, so we're going to be focusing on script maker and, and how we look at how those things are put together. Uh, but before I begin, I, I, let, me just, let me just tell you briefly what I was going for. I really wanted to design my code from the beginning in a modular way. I didn't want to have to go back and sort of refactor out or, or change everything after I came up with a good idea that I said, oh, this could be good um, as, a, as, a, as a module. So I came, came up with a, with a method that I think works pretty well, where I start building modules uh, from the very beginning. Now, I don't go all the way. I don't document them. I don't, um, I don't put configurations and tests and all that stuff. But I start from the very beginning thinking like this is going to be a module. And, and then um, it kind of moved its way down this path, and eventually maybe it will become uh, it'll become a, a full blown module at some point. But this is how I started. So we have three folders here um, in my structure: Fields Inc., GI Modules, and Modules. Now Modules is the specified um, Modules folder that you're supposed to use if you're using the spec from Modular FileMaker. And the other two are my own my own folders that that I've created for this. The first folder is, is named after the application, and that's called Fields Inc. And it contains code that is uh, currently heavily tied to the Fields Inc. application. So what we'll find inside there are um, two different groups of, of modules. Fields Inc. application modules and Fields Inc. domain modules. So everything that I write, every feature that I write, every script that I write, I think about fitting into a module first. So I start to group things together. Now, sometimes during the development, the, the names of these modules change a lot, and I refactor them, and I move things around. But that's OK. The important part is that I'm starting sort of with the end in mind. So if you look at the Fields Inc. application modules, these are modules which are focused on the structure of the application, the infrastructure of the application, maybe is a better way to put it. So they're not about uh, customers or invoices or contacts. They're about um, error handling, uh, account management, navigation, things like that. But they are modules, and I am thinking about them in terms of modules. And for some of them, as they get developed, I actually start to break them out into um, public and private folders, and they start to take on the shape of a modular FileMaker module. Now, at some point, I decide, you know what, this is good enough, and I think I'm going to want to use this in another application. So at that point, what I do is I move it down into the uh, domain module, and it goes down here. I'm sorry, not domain module. It goes down into GI modules. I'll get to domain modules in a minute. So in domain module, in uh, GI modules, I have some modules with, which I have deemed ready for general use here internally at Geist Interactive, but maybe aren't ready, or maybe will never get to modularfilemaker.org. But I go a little further here, and I start to actually put in a lot of, I put in the readmes, and I start to really divide things up and, and add configs and things like that to make them more generally useful. Uh, let me back up uh, one step and talk about domain modules. So domain modules are the modules, the, the code that is focused specifically on the subject matter of the app or the domain of the app. So 
here's where we have the code about customers and work orders and items and things like that. So this folder, field zinc, is where, is where the very specific code, or currently is very specific code is, to the application. GI modules are the modules that have made it sort of out of that realm and are generic enough that we want to use them in other places, but aren't quite ready for prime time. And then we have our, our regular modules here. Okay, so let's take a look, just, just, uh, just for fun, let's take a look at some of the modules that have made it out of, out of the, the first folder and down into GI modules. So I've got one here called, called Notifications. And you can see that I've started to um, you know, break it out. I've got the folders that are, specif that are, that are specified by the, the modular FileMaker spec. I've got the first script being a README. Um, I've got in um, public, I have a config folder, and in there I've got a script where I can config the notifications module. So what does notifications do? Well, it's kind of a fun little module um, inspired by some of the new stuff that we have in FileMaker 13. So let's take a look at it real quick. Um, so this is just a list view. I've got a, a quick find filter here. So if I type in something that we're going to find, we're going to get a subset of those records. Uh, and it's 157 found. But um, what if you don't find anything? What if you type in something like, you know, that's not going to be found? With Quick Find, it doesn't actually change the found set. It doesn't actually show zero records. Um, it leaves the current found set. But I wanted to warn the user and notify them that they didn't actually find anything in their filter. So I thought it was kind of odd that nothing, nothing would happen. So watch what happens. We get uh, this little panel slides out. It says no records match your filter. And then that panel is, is going to slide away uh, after, after a specified amount of time. I think it's five seconds currently. So let me, let me run that again so you can see it. Now, the user doesn't have to interact with it. They can just read it and then it will disappear. Or if they want to, they can actually click that little dismiss button there. So if I click one more time to bring it up, they can click dismiss and it disappears. So the, the notifications module is a module dedicated to notifying the user of things that, um, that they might need to know about but not necessarily block their interaction with the rest of the screen. Uh, you know, block with the UI, just kind of notifies them and then disappears. So it's different than a, than a standard, standard alert dialog. All right, so, uh, but just to show sort of how far I've taken this, I'm going to break the module a little bit by just moving it, moving the panel that it's made, that, that makes up the module, and watch what happens. I get, so when I do that, I now get, because the module is now broken, because I've moved it from where it's expected to be, uh, no records match your filter, and that throws up an alert dialog. So this module is getting, getting pretty robust. If for some reason the slide panel that makes up the notifications module is missing from the layout or not placed correctly, then it's just going to seamlessly fall back to a normal alert dialog that the user, so the user still gets that information. Um, they do have to dismiss it with a, with a click, but um, the module just works. So if I go back and I place that module back all the way up against the left-hand border like it's supposed to, uh, then when I click it and do it again, we should get our module back. So there it goes. So that's the notifications module. And eventually, the idea is that it might make its way down from here into a fully public module, in which case I'll post it up on the web. Uh, just one more module that's kind of neat to look at here is uh, work that I'm working on is this, is, is this print module that gives you a pop-up of the, um, the work order and I can scroll the windows with a little palette over here. I can save as PDF and save that to the desktop and um, there's my PDF shows up there. So this is another module which is intended hopefully someday to make it all the way out. All right, so that about wraps it up. That take, that's a look at some of the modules that we have in Modular FileMaker dot in, uh, in, in this um, GI modules folder. Um, and uh, that, that concludes this video. I hope you check out modularfilemaker.org and keep a watch uh, for some of the cool new modules that are getting added all the time. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.